I just want to encourage you on about one thing. It's, it's just it's such an amazing time to be alive right now. There's so wonderful, so such wonderful things happening. People are marching in the streets in New York and in Los Angeles, all around the country, demanding to have a better future. And you're going to be a big part of that. And a lot of this entertainment that you bring to people is going to be a huge part of that because you can link things like community service. Anybody do the community service? Get your Apka Serve shirt if you're out there. Say yeah. I encourage you all to add elements like that. There are literally hundreds of those kind of things that you can add to your entertainment that takes it from a level of just being something fun to do to encouraging people to act in a way that's going to better the world. Because you're all going to be future leaders. I believe in every single one of you. You're going to do amazing things. And we're going to take the future and we're going to make it a lot better for you. You're going to be a big part of that. Everybody here, if you believe that, say yeah. yeah. Because it's the truth. I said if you believe it, say yeah. Yeah. Because it's the truth, my friends. you got a great weekend to put wonderful things together for your campus so you can do amazing things. And right now, we're going to give you the man that's going to start that off. It's Del Suggs back there. Ladies and gentlemen, an icon in Camp St. Kevin's, my good friend, Del Suggs. Let's start it up. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Are you excited about the showcase? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. i got to give you a quick lowdown of what we're doing now. This is called a training showcase. So what we're going to do in the showcase is this is not going to be a, like your typical showcase. You're going to go from here to the lunch showcase, which will be a more traditional act of showcase, which will always have a handsome, charming MC between acts. Today, you just get me. Okay. Well, what we're going to do in today's showcase is we're going to have three showcasing acts, and in between each act, instead of having a, a wonderful performer keeping the energy up, we're going to actually going to step things down for a moment, and I'm going to step out. We've got three panelists down front. We're going to discuss how you could use this type of act on your campus. Because we know you always, we're always looking for new ideas. We want to generate some new ideas. So you don't think, well, it's a coffee house act. We've got to put them in the coffee house. You know, maybe there's other places you could put a comedian on your campus. Or another place you could put a lecture on your campus where you've traditionally done that. So this is what we're going to do in this show is to kind of get you thinking creatively about ways to use different kinds of acts on your campus. Now, have you learned basic showcase etiquette? And we know basic showcase etiquette. What you need to do when you're at showcases is, first of all, you need to be quiet and pay attention to the showcases. Don't be chatting between, you know, with your friends. Don't be doing uh, excessive texting. Make sure your phones are on silent, uh, and so you're paying attention. We ask you not to leave during a performance. If someone's on stage showcasing, they have paid a lot of money and given you their very best performance on the stage. You owe it to them and to the folks on your school campus to sit tight and attend to that program. And then if you need to run to the restroom or whatever, just slip out between acts. But always make sure that you stay in your seat and stay focused on the performance that are on stage because they're giving you their best and you owe it to them to, 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 to take it back. Um, questions about showcasing how this all comes together? Great, then let's go ahead and get started because I know you're ready to be entertained, aren't you? Yeah. You're ready to be entertained? Let me hear it. Yeah. Right. Excellent. I'm so excited. We've got three great, great acts for you today. You're going to love these folks. First up, Deshaun Ross has been on Disaster Date. Who's got jokes? And he's just back from entertaining our troops overseas. Please put your hands together and welcome a very funny man, Deshaun Ross. Yeah. Cut it up just a little bit. Fellas, this is a song you cannot ride with your homeboys with in your car. Cut it up. You cannot be riding with your friend like this. Cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't care, but I want to say this. I don't care what it, who you are, how tough you are, Beyonce will bring the girl out of you, okay? This, you could be riding around with some just the thuggest music with your friend who just got out of jail for killing 36 people. But that Beyonce, come on, you gonna act like a woman. Turn it up, woman. You be driving like, hey, dog, you good? You ready? Let's go do this. Okay. Play that one. Play that one. How's the best one? How's everybody doing? Y'all good? That's awful. How's everybody doing? Yeah, yeah I'm happy. I'm happy because uh, music, I like music. Anybody like rap music? Yeah. This is how I feel about rappers, let me tell you. I feel, I feel like rappers are ignorant geniuses, okay? It is, some songs are so stupid, but you can't help but to like it. You be like, ooh, cut that song off. But I love it. Like one of my favorite songs, right? Is by a dude named Walker Flock out of Atlanta, right? Walker Flock, yeah. It's, He's stupid though, you can't understand him. The best song that came on, right, is called Ole Dule. I was riding one day, I heard, I said, Ole Dule, hey, Ole Dule, hey, Ole Dule, yeah. I said, ooh, I'm gonna give me some Ole Dule, that's what I'm talking about. So I went down to Atlanta, right, I'm with my homeboy from Atlanta. I was singing Ole Dule, I was like, Ole Dule. He was like, dude, what song are you singing? I said, Ole Dule, listen to the music. 
is Walker Flocka. He said, fool, the song is old, let's do it. I was like, really? I didn't hear any of those words in that sentence. <laughs> then I got mad, like, don't be correcting me in my car. In my car, we say, oh, lay, do lay. You want to say, oh, let's do it, you get a car. I thought, have you heard the song, though? I thought he was saying an Olay Doolay. I swear to you, I was an Olay Doolay. I thought he was rapping in French. Like, yeah, he is a genius. <laughs> Olay Doolay, oui. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some Olay Doolay. It sounds delicious. <laughs> I didn't even know what Olay Doolay actually meant, but I'm like, okay. It's... But then I had to chalk it up to, like, sometimes people from the South, not that y'all, if you happen to be from the South, but sometimes some people speak really bad. <laughs> Have you ever talked to somebody from the South that spoke so bad you had to look at them like, are you even talking to me right now? It's... I don't understand these words. That's what you're saying. And if you don't believe me, go home tonight, watch this TV show, show called uh, Swamp People. You anybody seen this? This is disrespectful to the English dictionary. <laughs> and then there was a story on CNN a while back. There was a black woman in Florida who called the police over some chicken nuggets. Did anybody see this? Few people did. I'm not making this up. True story. Black woman walks into McDonald's. She goes, hey, let me get some chicken nuggets. She pays her money. They go, oh, we forgot. We're out of chicken nuggets. She goes, well, get my money back. They said, no, get something else or get out. Yeah, you see how women are, all did this? That's what she did. What? You're not giving me my money back. <laughs> and she got an attitude like most black girls do. She said, ooh, that's how black girls scratch their head. Ooh, I'm gonna blow this building up. <laughs> they never gonna blow that up, don't believe that. Um, that's what she tried to say, right? She spoke so bad. I thought I was watching the movie Roots. It was disrespectful. This, don't say, oh, it's okay, I'm black, I can say it. Um, <laughs> she got on TV to go, ma'am, tell us your story. This is what she said. She said, whoa, first of all, <laughs> I walked down, right? I said, uh, let me go in there and check the. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I was in the. Wait, don't let me laugh. Well, get out of here. You, 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 you don't give up. on my TV was like, dude, I don't know what she just said. It turned itself off. I was like, wow. <laughs> she said, chick nug. What is a chick nug? I didn't know what a chick nug was. Oh, they do like chick nug. <laughs> How many of y'all like to text messages more than talk? Clap your hands. I hope your fingers fall off. Uh, you ever get a text message from somebody so long, you just had to pick up the phone and call them back? Like, dude, I only got 160 characters. That don't make no sense. How many do you have? <laughs> And then I thought I'd think, what if the chicken nugget lady started text messages? <laughs> it just be a bunch of gibberish, oh, they do like, uh, da, 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 chicken nugget. See, what? <laughs> this is what I don't feel, too. Have you ever, like, got mad and just, like, you couldn't, so you call your friend, they ignore your call, and they go, like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by your phone call, like this? Pick up the phone and talk to me. I hate text messages. I hate, the, I hate abbreviations. I'm not good at abbreviations. I always, I always use them at the wrong time. I don't understand them. My sister texted me. I was going to her house. She said, don't go nowhere. BRB. I said, I don't want a burrito. Just hurry up and get back home. Because I'm hungry. <laughs> I didn't understand that it meant be right back. I didn't like that. I don't like text messages. I don't like everybody's signature matches their message. You see what I'm saying? Like this girl sent me a message the other day, the other day sir. And her signature said, God is good. I said, okay, I can roll with that. But her, 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 her message said something totally different. He said, Deshaun, come over later. I got some weed, some alcohol. Want to get drunk, drink your balls. God is good. I was like, oh, no, you can't say that. You can't say that. You got to change the signature. You got to say, like, the devil is busy. You got to say something different is what I'm saying. I got to say this. Um, I, I feel like everybody, everybody here, young freshmen, freshmen, make some noise, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, what? Seniors make some noise. Make some noise. Yeah, keep quiet because you got a long time to go. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, but you know what? I tell you guys this. Follow your dreams. No matter what it is, follow your dreams. Work hard at it and it will come true. I feel like that. That's, now, people are always going to tell you you can't do what you believe in because they're stupid. They couldn't do what they want to do, so they're going to hate on your dream. <laughs> That's the truth. When I was 12 years old, I was at church. This pastor, I told him what I wanted to be when I grew up. He laughed in my face so long. He forgot he was laughing, had a conversation with somebody else, came back and continued laughing in my face. It hurt. I was 12, right? I was at church. He was like, Sean, come here. What do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be on TV. He said, TV. I'm like, are you still laughing? It hurt my heart. 
<laughs> now, I say this not to brag, just to prove a point. Like, I honestly feel you work hard. Now, for me, I don't know about you, but I put God first. Work hard. You know what I'm saying? Your dreams will come true. I'm not bragging now. Because of that, I've been on TV five times. I know if you haven't seen me or not, I've been on it. <laughs> been on TV five times, been overseas four times to entertain the troops. And I believe in our troops, so give them a round of applause. We gotta be supporting them. But now every time I go back to church, I'll be like, Pastor Johnson, <laughs> payback. I'm gonna get out of here soon because I know uh, y'all got a lot of things to do and uh, booking and having fun. And uh, Who else is in here, sophomores? When do y'all graduate? They don't even know. See, like, uh, let's see. Uh, carry the one divided by the metric two. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure, sir. Don't be asking me no questions like that. <laughs> Have y'all went to class? To, you know, the first day. You know, the first day of class, you're supposed to go get the syllabus and get out, right? Yeah. That's that's protocol. But you ever got there, the teacher starts handing out the syllabus, talking about who got the book. Let's go over something. First of all, teacher, you got no rules. <laughs> this is I didn't. You you don't even go dress for class. You go like to go to the beach. Like I gotta go get ready. I gotta go swimming. We not supposed to be in class right now. This. You ever got the syllabus to be so long, you just handed it back like, I'm a cheat, I'm a cheat this class. It's, no, it's too much, go ahead, keep it. <laughs> Never gonna do this. How many of y'all cheated in school ever? Clap if you ever cheated. Don't lie, you better not lie. I'm sorry for you like, you never cheated, sir? Come on, ball head, you ain't never cheated? I cheated. How many people cheated? Clap, where my cheaters? Where y'all making sure them? Nothing's wrong with cheating, cheating is networking. How you gonna know your neighbor's name if you don't look off their paper? <laughs> Kyle, okay. <laughs> you know who I can't stand? The non-cheaters, these people right here. No, I studied. You can't see my answers. Move your arm, jerk, so I can see your test. They take it too serious. Like, I studied all night long. I hope you did. That's how I plan on passing this class. <laughs> I cheated on my friend Kyle so much, he had to get my graduation picture. I was like, come on, dog, just have your degree. <laughs> The best time of college is financial aid. Is that not correct? Right? When you get that check, woo! You be a baller when that check <laughs> I'm going to Red Lobster today. That's when your clothes look nice. You know, towards the end of the semester, when it starts running out, that's when you're wearing sweatpants, hoodies, white beaters, <laughs> sandals. I don't know. I miss college for one reason. Checks, that's it. <laughs> and uh, women. So, uh, fellas, you know, give it up for the women because they're here for us. And women can do a lot of things that we can't do. Women can go to the bathroom with each other and hang out and talk. If you ever tell your friend, like, you grab your buddy, but hey, dog, let's go to the bathroom together. Kill yourself because you can't do this. You can't have a conversation like, hey, how was last night? It was good? Yeah. You look like you're hanging kind of low there. Oh, uh, what are you doing? I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm going to be at Booth 58. And uh, come on, check me out. We'll have a good time, all right? My name is Deshaun Ross. Y'all have a good night. Thank you very much. Deshaun Ross. Okay, now Deshaun is, is, is a, a true comedian, great performer. We're going to now discuss how you can use a comedian like Deshaun on campus. I've got three distinguished panelists down front, and uh, we also want to get some input from you. So, Teresa, how could you use a comedian like this on your campus? At Ithaca College, uh, we have a stand-up competition um, that's like a month before, and then what happens, the winner of the stand-up competition gets to open up for the comedian, so that brings in a lot more students because they want to come see their friends. Um, and we usually do them uh, on like a Thursday or Wednesday, so that's kind of like a common time. Um, and we put them in a space called IC Square, and they're, the students come there to hang out, and there's food and all that stuff, so they're already there eating, so then they get to see it, and then they get to see their peers, so it just kind of continues like that. So they sort of do a campus version of Last Comic Sandy. Right. Yeah, and they have the, have the, the professional um, community come in and MC the show. No, and, and, no, no. no. They, get to, they get to open for them. Yeah, they get to open. Yeah, which is great. You get, you get a chance to then put it on your resume, you got to open for the British Open. Yeah. Press. Cliff? Yeah. Uh, we have a, a program on our campus called the Week of Welcome. And uh, I, I think it'd be great, like uh, um, for orientation purposes, for new students. I think right out of the beginning, it sounds like a lot of his, uh, you know, his uh, his bit has to to do with uh, with college and new students and stuff. So I think it'd be perfect for uh, our week of welcome. Yeah, it'd be great for an orientation show, maybe a parents' weekend show, something like that. Because it's a sort of act that appeals to a larger audience, maybe than just college students. So Deshaun had mentioned that he uh, spent some time overseas with the troops. What would be very simple for your students to do on your campuses is to have some letters set up 
some addresses, all that information is available online, and have students, while they're waiting for the show to begin, write letters to the troops. So you kind of tie into his experience, but you're also doing something that doesn't really cost you anything, and is a community service. Excuse me, a community service project as part of your event. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and think about this. I'm all about the education, all about the learning process. You've got a professional comedian coming to your campus. Do you have a drama, a theater department on your campus? Yes. Yeah, wouldn't it be awesome to get a professional comedian like Deshaun to come into the classroom and talk about what it's like to be a professional comedian? What it's like to be on the road? How to get a cheap meal in a hotel in, uh, uh, in New York City? Yeah. Uh, what it's like to go to auditions? Exactly how the business operates. So it's Take advantage of these folks on their own while they're on your campus because there's so many opportunities you can expand and, and reach out. Any other thoughts about how we use, use a comedian on campus? I would say anything that um, you had mentioned about your comedian show, but anything that's like a talent show, he could be the MC for. And I think for those schools who have done a talent show out there, that it's much better to have a professional MC than a um, random dude with a guitar from your campus. <laughs> Well, and, you, and you'll see. How many of this is your first APCA conference? Yeah, if it's your first conference, then you're probably not familiar with how the, how the showcases work. But you'll see, particularly at the, at the next few showcases, because you're, you're not getting a good, good image of it right now because of what we're doing with this training process. But from now on, you'll see how the MCs really pull the show together. And so think about bringing in a professional performer to actually serve as the MC for these events. How many of you have an awards banquet at the end of the year? Yeah, and you have like a real boring keynote speaker who gets up and draws up? Wouldn't it be cool to bring in a comedian to be your keynote speaker for, you know, for, for, for a program like that? Paris Weekend, uh, Founders Day, any sort of event like that, think about ways you can plug your own, plug, plug these sorts of acts in, and, and again, when you think creatively, don't think if you bring a comedian on campus, you've got to have a comedy club on campus, because there are all sorts of places you can put these folks and have before. Make sense? Any questions? Am I doing good? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, let's get started because we got another great act I'm going to bring up for you. You're going to love, you're going to love this performer. I've got a chance to chat with him backstage beforehand. He's, he's an awesome guy. Sam Brenner is an amazing singer, songwriter, representing about cutting edge entertainment. He's making his first appearance at an APCA conference today. This is his first showcase, so you got to really give it up for him when he gets out here because this is his debut this morning. Uh, he's performing in a variety of schools all across the uh, the Northeast and Midwest. He's open for a life house, Andrew Rip, and get for the people to his family. Welcome, Jeff Brady. This being my first showcase ever, I figure that I'll go through all my greatest hits today. So I'll be playing for about five or six hours, so <laughs> hope, <laughs> hope your seats are good. Del, if you could just lock the door, that'd be great. <laughs> this first tune is a, a tune I wrote called Bigger Than Me. Mixing up my music scene Well I never say never for the chance of forever Becoming the star that we wish on together Or maybe if the weather was better Then we see the sky high, high Oh my head is high, high up in the clouds I'm never coming back, no never coming down And if it come full circle, I'll come around Candy till you get to the center and you're leaving me empty. Well, how many legs does it take to get to my soul? Are you believing? I'm leaving for bigger things, dreaming the boy in the songs. I guess that I'm seeing the road around in trouble again. Yeah. 
is your life And now you're asking why could it be That the memories are always, are always <laughs> To the house about seven or eight And I yelled to the cab of your home to smell you later Look at my kingdom, I was finally there Kicking my throne on the Prince of Ballet Ballet, Ballet, Ballet Alright, we'll keep it in the U.S., ready? Right? Help me out I put my hands up Singing my song, the butterflies fly away I'm not in my head like In my head's like Let's go west, all right? I know you know this one. your popsicle goes oh no it's bigger than me alright alright thank you so much thank you so much so again my name is Sam Brenner from Cutting Edge Entertainment please come out and see me and Rob we've got three CDs we've got promo cards I'd be happy to sign them for you I'll sign your forearm your forehead your advisor's forehead Whatever it is. Whatever you're into. <laughs> Just think about it. Alright, this last song is a song I wish I wrote. Please feel free to clap along, right? <laughs> Is there ain't no way to resolve Beat yourself a vanity And just go get the 
seasons, it's what we do. Holiday is our virtue, but I won't take no more. No more. I'm sure there's no need to come. Our time is so short. Your wind is our fate. I'm yo, 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 yo. Thank you guys. I'm feeling the love right now. I'm feeling the love right now. Yeah. I'm feeling so much love. I'm going to give it back to you. Not like that. So please come out and visit 789. I want to meet all of you. I want to shake your hands. I want to kiss your babies. It's a phrase. Because you want to know what? 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 Chicken butt. I am to you, and definitely you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. I am. easily presented programs. So when, when you hear the term coffee house, it doesn't mean you can only put them in a Starbucks, okay? It means they're easy to present any place on campus. Um, and so keep that in mind. An act like this is something you can put almost anywhere on your campus and, and, and bring entertainment actually to, the, to, the, to, the, to, your, to your students someplace else. Got, got some, uh, some input here from our panel? Yeah, I think that uh, Sam would be great for uh, theme parties. I think uh, oh, if it was a party. beach party or if it was a Halloween or St. Patrick, I think he'd be. Uh, I think he's very upbeat. I think he'd. Uh, I think he'd carry that well, and you could have other acts and things going on all at the same time. Yeah. Um, for for Sam, if you have a fashion show on your campus or like a Mr. and Mrs. Um, like a beauty pageant type thing, um, you would be great host, MC, play music while. Um, people are coming out or while judging is going on so it's a great way to kind of have him there where he's being showcased but at the same time you have another event going on yeah great great opportunity to, to, to sort of bring a professional again and sort of pull everything together um, and any, any any sort of a crowd that gathers on your campus for any specific reason other than being entertained is a great opportunity to set forward to do something like this um, one of our programs that we had uh, for our first year program with Pro and Pro Jumpstart, and the kind of the kickoff to end of the big celebration thing that they do, they brought in uh, acoustic performer similar to Sam, and he brought it in, and it just brings the whole audience together. Uh, especially that he does cover songs too, makes him with his own songs, that helps the artist to stay, the audience stay engaged. Yeah, I love the idea of using an act like this anytime you've got a crowd on your campus. Suppose you're, you bring in a, some big novelties, you know, folks are standing in line to do wax hands or something like that. Great opportunity to have an act like this performed for those people who are waiting to do something else. Every blood drives on campus. Yeah, wouldn't this be awesome to have something something like this happening while people are waiting to get blood because you know that's kind of a dirty. You know, so it would be great. Again, so think about opportunities you can bring in an act in to help supplement a, you know another program that you have going on on campus simultaneously. Any any other thoughts, ideas? Yeah, again, we want you to think creatively. So, so don't think when you see an act like this that there's only one place you can put them on your campus. There are all sorts of places you can use an act like this. Would an act like this work for um, for parents' weekend, a little synth weekend, or family weekend, something like that? Ooh, how about this? Sam could play a halftime show at an athletic event. Sure, you could you could have him come out in the middle of the uh, the middle of the basketball court, halftime, drive a truck with a sound system out in the middle of the football field. Instead of the marching band, yes. Again, think creatively about it. You see these different types of. Stuff. How about this? Do you drain your pool during the winter? Have put the performer in the deep end of the pool. That'd be cool. 
Okay, I'm trying to stimulate your thought process here. Trying to get those synapses firing. I know it's early in the day, you haven't got enough caffeine, but I want you to think creatively about these actions because it's so refreshing to see a great performer in a unique place. So think about putting an act like this in the uh, TV room of a residence hall, in the lobby of a residence hall, or in the, in the student center. How many of you do moon shows on campus? Lunchtime shows? Yeah, it'd be great for that. It'd be great for sure. So think about ways you can use these types of acts on the campus. And again, transfer what we're, what we're helping you understand about this act. So don't think you can only use Sam in these situations. Think about all the other acts of this type that you're going to see here before we find the ones that are going to work best for your campus. And think about bringing them in. Is this working for you? Yeah. Learning, learning some stuff? Yeah. Good, we're all about the learning. That's what we're all about. Okay, okay well, let's get our, our, our next showcase act up. We're real excited about this. Uh, dealing with the history of hip hop. Wes Jackson is the executive director of the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival, and he's president of Brooklyn Bodega. He's here to talk about the history of hip hop culture from the 1970s until now. Please put together your hands together to welcome with the history of hip hop, Wes Jackson. <laughs> Everybody doing you all right? of the culture, so the elements of it. Uh, but we're going to get into that really quickly. 
Uh, again, uh, a little bit more about myself is I am uh, the, the executive director of the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival. Sorry, I'm going to work more time. Um, we, we put on the biggest uh, hip hop event in New York City. Uh, we did uh, about 20,000 people come to downtown Brooklyn every year. Been doing it for seven years. This year we were lucky enough to have uh, Q-Tip, Kanye West, uh, Buster Rhymes, Black Ball from the Roots, and other people. Uh, so we have, um, so I myself and my team have a great deal of experience, uh, not only in, uh, intellectually but practically. But so what is the point? Why do this? Why spend this money to bring me here or spend your time to come? It's because hip hop is, maybe when I was your age or a little bit younger, my dad told me it was gonna be a fad, right? It wasn't gonna last. That obviously is not true. Hip hop is the most powerful cultural force in the, United, in the United States, America, even the world right now, being used in fashion, technology, politics. I'm a businessman. So as a businessman, you can't help but recognize the economic power of, of hip hop. But whether there's be some fans who want to better understand the music, or there may be aspiring artists who want to get their foot in the door, or aspiring businessmen who want to get their foot in the door, we will sort of sprinkle and spread some seeds and help you help make your own decision uh, and appreciate the art form. All right? What we want to do is talk about, in addition, we talk about the history of hip hop. This is the, the very nerdy academic part of the of, of, uh, presentation, which I love, which may, which I'm a nerd though, so that's cool. Uh, but I'm cool, I'm, I'm, I've come to terms with that. Uh, but we talk about how, why did hip hop start in the South Bronx? Why New York? Why not LA? Why not Houston? Why not, uh, you know, why not Syracuse? Why not any of your schools? And there are certain, um, economic, political, city planning, urban planning issues that, that planted the seeds. And before we get into the music and we listen to the videos and we talk a little bit about that, we want to talk about uh, what, what set the stage. And some of that stuff is policies from going all the way back to Richard Nixon, to Gerald Ford, to Robert Moses, and, and various things for our political science majors that may be in there. So we will be bringing in not only entertainment, but a bit of the academic. All right, then we'll get into the four elements of hip hop, which are widely recognized as MCing, DJing, B-boy, and graffiti. All right, and just a quick overview of that, we talk about the MC, the front man, the one that we all know, the Lil Wayne, the Drake, the Rick Ross, whoever the case may be. We talk about the different types of MCs. Uh, the, the, the first MC was much more of an entertainer and more about the, the party, uh, more about the party and keeping the crowd hype. We get into the uh, political MC like a Chuck D or Rock Him. Then we get into uh, what I like the, the sex symbol MC, which was the LL Cool J. Usually the ladies get a better reaction when the LL plays, but that's fine with me. Um, the, uh, but then we talk into sort of the, what I like to call the swagger rapper, or trap rappers, things that are going on today. Uh, and then we get into what I also like to call the singing rappers, which we like to call uh, Drake or Adam or Lord Hill. We talked about the DJs, our DJ culture, that that's where hip hop actually started. It wasn't about the MC at first, it was about the DJ, that person, that man or woman who could manipulate these turntables, manipulate the technology, uh, pulling electricity out of, out of lampposts and figuring out how to use two turntables to loop a record. And we talk about the different types of DJs, from the turntablists to the party DJs to actually performing DJs. Then we get into uh, b-boy break dancing, uh, which was actually even before, was was connected with the DJ as you played the music. You had these kids who, who now you may see on TV. You can see their their moves in Chris Brown videos, or the uh, so you think you can dance, all that other stuff comes back to b-boy and break dancing uh, culture. So we'll speak about that. Speak about those origins. Then lastly, we'll talk about graffiti which is the most uh, demonized aspect of hip hop culture, uh, or criminalized, I should say. But we'll talk about how the, how the concept of graffiti goes back to hieroglyphics or civil rights movements, and is actually the basis of uh, the advertising industry today. Then we'll move into the decades of hip hop, starting with the 1970s. All right, we'll talk about the Sugar Hill Gang, Curtis Blow, We'll look at uh, these type of outfits that these guys used to wear. I will come dressed up like this if that's going to help seal the deal <laughs> with the horns. Um, but we'll talk about how it used to physically look in the 70s, and then we'll get into the 80s where we start talking about Public Enemy, 
Uh, we'll talk about Ice-T, who you guys may recognize from NCS or whatever show he does now, but I remember him as, as the rapper Ice-T, and we'll begin to see how these rappers who started in the 80s now are moving into different uh, uh, genres and, 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 uh, and, and fields. We talk about the 90s. Yes, we will talk a lot about Vanilla Ice. All right? Vanilla Ice is very important. Don't hate on it. All right? Vanilla Ice introduced tremendous sums of money to hip-hop culture, which set the table for much of what we do today. So we'll talk about the hip-hop in the 90s under Clinton and the dot-com money falling from the skies, we like to say. We'll talk over to the 2000s, and we'll talk about uh, artists that we saw there, Kanye West, Eminem, and how they uh, manipulated, uh, or not manipulated, into the game. And then we'll end the talking in the 2010s, where we are right now. All right, talking about um, the second generation, which I love about this, is you have someone like a Willow Smith, who many of you guys is Will Smith's daughter, who I know is the Fresh Prince, maybe you know as the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or you're beginning to see hip hop that had to claw and scratch its way in the 1970s, just to be heard is now big business. And now you have second generation money where Willow Smith just literally has to go to her dad and say, um, can I do a record? And he says, yeah, sure, take it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right? All right, I wish I had that money. But then we'll talk about, and then we'll sort of end speaking about the political nature of this. Here you have a picture of President Barack Obama with Ludacris, and you'll see that even Barack Obama is a hip hop fan. So if, they, if we have achieved a victory, it is that uh, Barack Obama's a Jay-Z fan. So that makes me very happy. All right? But thank you for your time. We're at Booth 30. You can come and see uh, Greg at GTHQ. I would love to see you guys on your campuses. Enjoy the conference. And uh, I hope to see you guys later this afternoon. All right, let me hear from you. Let's ask, let me hear it. History of hip hop. What do you think? How could you use a program like this on your campus? There are so many different ways you can use this sort of program on your campus. What do you think? I agree. I think that uh, there is just a potpourri of things that you could do from educational to entertainment. You have a music department, you have a theater department, you have a history department. You, you could you could run this guy on campus all day long and run him from place to place. I mean, from entertainment to, to education. There's unlimited amount of things you could do with him. Yeah, now Wes is the, the uh, you know, he's, he's the executive director of the uh, of, of, of this huge festival. Now, would this work for your business department, your business school? Yeah, would that be a great opportunity there? To show sort of the business side of the music industry, how this works. Teresa? Along with reaching out to the academic department, um, especially in, in Wes's presentation, there's so many different organizations on our campus that would benefit. So if you reach out to the different, you find out what the speaker uh, benefits in, and then they can reach out to the student organizations as well as the academic departments. Yeah, let's get some obvious things out of the way. Would this work in February? Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. November. November. Okay. Great. Yeah. We were talking over here. We have um, we just started integrating dance choreography into our. Um, Native American History Month, African American History Month, um, Hispanic History Month, and we have a performer come and do a dance area related to um, that theme for that month. And this is a great way that you can integrate it, but we were also talking about the facet that you could do an all-day programming aspect where you have them come in and then you could highlight the four major areas of hip-hop, have a you know, break dancing performance group, um, have you know airbrush extravaganza for graffiti art and do a novelty and sort of attract it all and um, sum it up into an overall campus program. Yeah, you know, one of the things we always learn about culture, I'm a history major in college, and one of the things we know about culture is that if, uh, culture you don't understand is, is a culture you don't appreciate. And so think about hip hop culture. Um, you know, again, I'll throw this out. This one, I think this would be great for like a parents' weekend, something like that. You know, because how many of your parents, you know, love R and B, but they don't get hip hop? You know, this is a great chance for them to make the connection and understand the culture that was involved. So think about you know this this type this sort of, this type of an act. It's great to, to have these sorts of programs. These these lecture programs, these educational programs that are also entertaining. And there are a lot of programs like this out there. So again, think creatively about how you can use this type of program on your campus. Any other thoughts or comments? Yes. Yeah. Have them come speak about hip hop and then maybe help organize like a da dance competition, like have a break down, break dance competition, something like that. Sure, a lot of ways to use this type of program. Yeah. 
Greg, um, to the Booking Agent for this show. I just wanted to let you guys know one thing. When you're doing lectures, the biggest thing you want to do with mid, mid price lectures is make sure people show up. So the first thing you want to do when you do something like this is think about different departments, academic departments, that this would appeal to. You go to a kind of poli sci. This happened to a show that we did on Monday. They did a workshop in the afternoon for the poli sci and told all the kids to show up to the event that evening as part of an extra credit. If you don't have people show up at your mid-sized lectures, it's going to be the first thing that gets locked off when you guys start having budget cuts. So make the effort to get other people actively involved in the lecture program. Yeah, we're all about bigger crowds and better shows. So it's a great idea to, 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 to really collaborate with your, with, your, with your professors and your classes on campus to get folks to come to these events. Because a lot of times you will bring in lecturers that have an amazing program but it's hard to get an audience to, to attend. So have these folks come on campus early. We call those teasers, where they come in and maybe do a program with the, uh, uh, in, a, in a classroom where they go and speak to, to the different majors. And, and you will find whatever lecture you bring on campus, there will be professors on your campus who are really into those topics and can encourage their students to, to attend. And you know, one of, the, one of the big struggles we have in student activities is getting people to the programs, right? Isn't that your, isn't that your challenge? You bring in great artists, great performers from all genres and all different types of acts, and your big struggle of just getting people there. So what we have to do sometimes is find ways to encourage them. We have to trick them. We have to give them free pizza to come. You know, why don't we give away free food? Get people to come to shows? Yeah, we have to trick them. Once they get there, they love the program. But we have to trick them to get there. So find ways to, to trick students to come to lecture programs that you bring in. Because once they're there, they'll love the program. So it's all about getting them there. That's, that, that's the main thing. You folks have been great. What do you think of this of this, this type of a showcase? Does this give you a chance to figure out how this, these acts work on your campus? Because that's what we want to do. Thanks for being a part of this showcase. I'm going to turn things back over to Jason now. All right, a big round of applause for Dale bringing us through this training showcase journey. One more big round of applause for all the acts on the stage. Great, it only gets better. So right now, just a few directions, you're going to be heading.